Welcome to Commander Pop Culture, a place to gather magical information with some laughs, might I add. Welcome to Modern Horizons 3 Spoilers. Uh, I'm going to cover the stuff from Thursday and today. You're all here to hear all the applications of the cards and see the cool art, so let's get started. First off, we have Roisin Roaring Prophet. Four mana, on ETB, mill six, and then you put a card with X. X mana cost from among them in your hand, and then you can tap it. Reveal any number of cards with X in their mana costs and then add two colorless for each card revealed this way. Get the spend mana only on costs that contain X. That's pretty cool. It's a much better improvement than the last machine we got. The last one just adds four colorless based uh, for X spells, I think. This has a little bit extra. You get a little value on the ETV trigger and you could still generate a ton of mana. It just depends on how uh, blustered your hand is. The only trade off to doing this is that you reveal to your opponents everything that's coming their way and uh, keeping this in play will probably be very challenging. If they know that you're about to kill everybody at the table with a bunch of X spells, I. I imagine you're gonna garner a lot of uh, unwanted attention. So just be careful. Uh, make sure when you start the thing, start revealing stuff that you have this well protected. <laughs> Imsker Iron Eater, infinity for artifacts. I need to be draw X cards, lose X life for X to the half of the number of artifacts you control around it down. That's pretty sweet. Cost reduction and you just draw a bunch of cards with the exception of losing life. Um, not a bad deal. And then for four mana, you could sack an artifact, deal damage equal to the artifact's mana value to any target. This card kind of does everything. It's card advantage, has cost reduction, so it's really hard to keep off the table, and it has targeted removal on it. You'd either use that removal to, like, chip people's life down or take things off the board. The applications of this is pretty darn good. Yeah, I love this card a lot. It's a really strong legendary creature. Can't wait to build one uh, around and feature on the channel for all of you to see. It's a unique uncommon. Has Devoid and Flying. Uh, whenever you draw your second card each turn, you create a Eldrazi spawn. This has been a fun little archetype lately is something happening on the second card you draw, making a body that also ramps you. This is particularly strong because you could use those tokens to fuel casting cantrips on other people's turns, so you can continuously get that trigger over and over again. I think this card is way better than people think it is at first glance, but when you can give yourself mana to cast more spells, I guess even that triggers those things as well because I know there's a bunch of cards out there in magic that trigger whenever you cast a second spell. This also enables those strategies. Gold-tailed trainer. Auras and equipments cost Lex where X is its power. Whenever it attacks, other modified creatures control get plus X plus X where X is its power. So lots of rewards for enchanting and equipping this. Does everything you kind of want for your other things. The stat increase clause, it's a little bit of a bummer because those creatures also have to be modified. So it's it's in a powerful effect, but it's also fairly balanced. Like the design on this card a lot. Obtruse Appropriation, four mana removal spell. Oh, not only do you get to exile the thing, but you also get to recast it for any mana you wish to spend on it. It just has to equal the CMC. That's pretty awesome, actually. Birthing Ritual. Being of your end step, if you control a creature, look at the top seven cards of your library, and then you may sack a creature. If you do, you know, put a creature card mana value X or less from among those cards on the battlefield, or X is one plus to sack creature's mana value. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a mortar. It's a pod effect that um, only lets you look at the top few cards. Interesting. It also can trigger uh, the same turn you play it, which is nice. You sack something on your end step. Cool card. If you're playing a bunch of one-off effects like ETB or death triggers just sack them to this and get something better out of the deal and keep the train going you could always go bigger because of the plus one uh, clause that's attached to this card but card selection is a powerful thing even at the sacrifice of uh, a body I think looking cards every turn for something better is a pretty sweet deal. Ghostfire Slice is a nice removal spell. The new cutoff for dealing with things is like four toughness. This obviously does four damage. All it requires is a multicolored permanent to be in play for you to get the cost reduction. It basically becomes a really strong bolt. I think nine or ten out of ten times in the game of Commander you're gonna meet that requirement of a multicolored thing being in play and you just have to invest one. Pretty sweet, uncommon. <laughs> it's been a real slice. <laughs> Nadu Wing Wisdom. It's a legendary creature with for three flying creatures you control have whenever this becomes a target of spell or ability, reveal the top of your library if it's a land. 
On the battlefield, otherwise put in your hand. This ability triggers only twice each turn. Coiling Oracle trigger, and it happens whenever it comes to target of something. You could target your own stuff. Like if you play a bunch of um, pump effects, like combat tricks, you could do it twice a turn to get this trigger twice in your turn. It also triggers when other people target your stuff. If you're the one that wants to maximize the twice a turn clause, you'd have to be playing other things at instant speed. And I don't know how much there is out there, but I mean, there's a bunch of fight spells that are in instant speed that you might be able to take advantage of this with. It's just really efficiently costed. I think this is a really good Simic Commander. Phyrexian Tower is getting a reprint, so there is going to be a full art treatment for this. Take your pick of which one you like more, because the previous iteration we got was the Seeker Lair one for Dracula's Castle. The other one has like that weird box underneath the title for its actual name. This just, I think, looks better. The other one is worth 50 bucks, so I think you can get this one for a lot cheaper. Sell that one if you want. Cool that we're getting a reprint of Phyrexian Tower. You cannot have enough of these. Charitable Levy. Non-creature spells cost one more to cast. Already love those effects. You want to make your deck as one side as possible, like if you're in a creature deck. This would basically only affect your opponents. Your opponents cast a non-creature spell. You put levy counters on this. Once you hit three, you get sack and draw a card and then tutor for a planes. Put a battlefield tap. It doesn't specify it has to be a basic. You can get your dual lands, like your shocks with this. Pretty sweet enchantment. Does everything that you want in an aggro list. Eviscerator's Insight. Two mana, sack a creature or artifact to draw two cards. It's also an instant, so a lot of people play these effects to respond to people's removal, and then you get just value out of something that was going to die anyways. The fact that this also has flashback as a first kind of makes that this having two mana to cast very fair, because the best iterations are the ones that cost one mana. And because of this having flashback, it kind of warrants that extra mana. Like it a lot. Crab Abomination. Emerge from artifacts. If you don't know what emerges, normally you have to sacrifice a creature, but since it specifically says artifacts, you could sacrifice an artifact to reduce this cost. So it says seven, and if I sack a Psalm Simulcrum, it would reduce this by four, and it would become uh, three mana to cast for this alternative version. On ETB, oh, okay, so you exile multiple things. You exile a top card of their library, a card at random from their graveyard, and a card at random from their hand, and then you get to cast a spell from among cards exiled this way without paying its mana cost. That's a bummer. You hit three different areas, but you only get one. Because it's a random factor, you could snag things out of your opponent's control that they don't want to give up, and that's the nice part. The downside is uh, it's not a guarantee that you're going to get something good, and it just lets you pick the best from those three cards. Not terrible, but uh, not the best either. Fanatic of Ronus. Two mana dork. Has Ferocious. It lets you tap for four if you have a creature of power four or greater, and it has Eternalize. I think for the, the best two drop mana dorks have to be Priest of Titania and Tender Bloom, but once you go beyond one mana producing one, you want some extra bonus effects to make it worth your while. Adding four green is super good. I think this is going to be a nice mana dork staple that we'll have to play with in the future. Or Shadow Spinner ain't bad. Lifelink 2-3. Whenever it attacks, you draw cards equal to its power. If you do discard that many cards, this lets you get some card selection. Um, you have to make sure you have a, some extra cards in your hand because if you draw multiple cards that you want to keep, then um, you'll need a fatter hand size. If you attack with zero cr cards in hand, You'll draw those cards and pitch them immediately. Um, and then that scenario, you want to be utilizing your graveyard a lot. That way you're not missing out on anything because this thing scales up based on power. If you're a graveyard deck, this might be a good thing to keep in mind if you empower your creatures in some way as well. Necrodominance. Triple black, you skip your draw step. At the beginning of your end step, you may pay any amount of life your life expendable. If you do draw that many cards, your max hand size is now five. If a card or token would be put in your graveyard from anywhere, Exile it instead. Oh, this is very similar to Necropones. I guess it has a give and take. Necropones is nice in that it gets around Notion Thief, while this does not. It specifically says draw. This one also reduces your hand size by two, but if you're playing a bunch of permanents that trigger off of you drawing cards, this is better than Necro potence. I think if you're already playing Necropone, it's like, why not play Necrodominance? These cards, when they hit the table, they're hard to beat. 
when it comes to like commander every time someone gets one of these down and they get to keep it for multiple turns you just can't keep up with them because they'll always have a full grip of cards while everyone else will not this is going to be huge mono black staple um i expect this to be pretty expensive because it's also a mythic ashling the flame dancer you don't lose unspent mana as steps and phases in it's very similar to omnath and the leyline dragon whenever you cast or copy an instant spell discard and draw if it's the second time you do two damage to each opponent and each creature they control if it's the third time add four red it's nice that the pyroclasm effect is one-sided it doesn't affect your own board card advantage piece is nice and the four mana is nice as well i like that they're treating elementals like this ever since they've made omnath a lot of these elementals have been doing this kind of effect where you get years worth of uh, value this is the full art version pretty dope but like the the hot pink really contrasts the portrait that we have here eldrazi drone this is pretty good whenever you cast a color spell you create a zero one eldrazi and then whenever a colorless creature enters this battlefield under your control you deal one damage to an opponent <laughs> so if you're casting a colorless creature spell not only will you deal damage from the token it makes itself but you also deal damage with the thing you just cast this thing seems really busted and fun i just like how it just speeds into itself so easily for three mana you're getting a pretty sweet deal the scions are super powerful they ramp you as well they let you get to this big eldrazi on the back end of your game plan art way of innovation and just the battlefield's top to you control an island seems pretty fair add a blue and then the next fill you cast a certain has improvise oh if you don't know what improvise is uh you just tap an artifact and it pays for one of its generic costs unless that artifact happens to be blue or whatever else you add that color to the casting of the spell and this is the full art version holy cow this looks pretty sweet <laughs> i want one anytime you could have cost reduction it's good and then you get to put it on a land it just adds incredible utility this might be a very expensive land eldrazi line breaker three mana three three trample being of combat on your turn target creature control against haste and plus x plus so till on a turn where x is the number of eldrazi you control it's a fair effect i like that it's efficiently costed what i've experienced with playing eldrazi is that you do a whole lot of nothing in the beginning you're just playing a bunch of mana rocks and then hopefully when you go empty-handed you start ripping your big payoffs off the top of your library. These cheaper mid range year cards go nicely in the middle, but I think because it has red and this way symbol in it, it's gonna be played in very niche decks. So it's a little bit of a bulk rare. I think this will be very cheap for people to afford. Kozilix Command, ah, that's pretty awesome. We get a command card that's colorless. We've never gotten one of these before, but it will fit the cycle of commands pretty nicely. Choose two. Target player creates X Eldrazi tokens. Target player scries X draws a card. Exile target creature with mana value X or less. Exile X target cards from a graveyard. Oh. I think the best effects from this is probably the Eldrazi tokens and the removal piece of this. Sometimes I imagine you'll do the exiling cards from graveyards, but the target to scry and draw a card seems kind of lame. <laughs> Nixborn Hydra, it's a bestow creature, has reach and trample and enters with X counters on it. If you bestow it onto something, that enchanted creature gets the investment that you made into this and reach a trample as well i'm kind of glad that they're uh making bestow so much more powerful uh, historically when they made these in theros the bestow cost was so incredibly expensive that it wasn't really worth you doing and thus it didn't see a lot of play those cards but they seem to be making the bestow cost way more fair and valuable for people to pursue it and i'm glad that they're doing it because these might see a lot of play especially in commander i don't know about in modern if the format is slow enough for this kind of stuff but i'm happy to see it as a commander player oh metastatic evangel whenever another non-token creature enters the battlefield and control proliferate that seems really easy to do and abuse it's also got like pretty nice stats for a two drop glyph elemental has a landfall trigger lets you put a plus one plus one counter on it or you put it on the creature it's enchanted Thing. Again, they made the the CMC for the bestow version cheap and worth you pursuing. I like this uncommon a lot. Primal prayers, ETB you get 
two energy, and then you may cast creature spells with mana value three or less by paying energy rather than paying its cost. If you cast a spell this way, you may cast it though it had flash. This is basically a neutered version of Alluring. Alluring is a very expensive card because you just abuse that by playing creatures that bounce themselves. This one sets a limitation based on your energy production. Uh, I think this will be a cheap rare because it can only be played in energy decks and a lot of them don't play green. So it even narrows the decks that want to play this even further. I think in 60 card modern formats, this is just fine. But like in commander, not so much a great card. Copy crook. I am not a crook. I am not a crook. We're getting a new four drop clone that has a connive attack trigger. That's pretty nice. I play Garuda clones where I just try to make clones of him. I get additional ETB triggers to do the thing again. It's like, a, I call it a slot machine because it's a very RNG based. We'll have a home in that. But if you have other clone decks that you play, this is a nice addition to that. Estra's Invocation is going to reprint. This thing is super good. On your upkeeps, you get to change whatever this is copying into something else. So it's got a lot of utility. If you also like ETB triggers with your auras, there's some enchantresses that do. Nets you a card. Toxic Deluge is getting a reprint. Uh, last time I checked, this was a $7 board wipe. It's the best board wipe in black because it gives things minus X, minus X, where X is the amount of life you pay into it. It's super good because it gets around protection spells that give stuff indestructible. It's why Teferi's protection is so good, just because that's the only thing that consistently deals with this. It's Lawless Maneuver and Hero's Intervention isn't good enough, and that's why people play Toxic Deluge. It's also incredibly mana efficient for three mana. I hope this falls around five bucks or less because then I could feature on the channel and prove show you how powerful it is if you don't already know shifting woodland enters battlefield tap the left control four so it's the green version of that you need to have four different permanent types in your graveyard for you to get this activated ability it becomes a copy of a target permanent card in your graveyard till end of turn wow that's pretty sick i like this a lot this is just a, an extremely valuable land the wizards graced us with a very powerful land again good job the full art looks pretty dope it's on innistrad which is the plane that has the mark of avacyn plaster on all the trees i guess <laughs> this is a really sweet uncommon on landfall you get to get an energy and then you can pay six energy to draw three cards <laughs> It's also got a sweet stat block so you can stuff out a bunch of aggro. Now this does fit into the color combinations that Energy likes in Commander, and you can take advantage of it. I think the Jeskai decks are some of the best. In Modern, I think this is a pretty sweet effect as well. Just uh, dealing with aggro and then just stockpiling easy energy seems like a sweet deal. And you play a lot of fetches in Modern, so I imagine you'll be making two energy consistently a turn. Guide of Souls. So whenever a creature enters the battlefield under control, you gain one life and get an energy. Again, another sweet energy enabler makes racking those up really easy. Whenever you attack, you may pay three energy. If you do, put two counters on and a flying counter on target attacking creature. It comes an angel in addition to its other types. Another stellar white weenie. I hope energy decks become a thing in modern now because they definitely did not exist in the format when I was playing and probably up to this point. Have you ever seen so much energy? But the amount of support that it's getting is incredible. The energy theme might make some waves, not only just in Commander, but in Modern as well. Sundering Eruption, this is the mono red MDFC that can come in on tap. Sorcery side is actually pretty decent. You get to blow up a, a land and they get a basic to replace it, but they add the caveat of making it so creatures without flying can block this turn. So if you have a really wide strategy or you're going really tall, you could potentially one-shot someone in conjunction with this. The other beautiful part is the creatures that can't block affects all your opponents. So you could blow up any land that's being an issue. Say um, you want to kill a different target and kill a different player, you do have that option instead of letting things go to waste. Because obviously if you can full send and kill someone, you obviously don't need to blow up that player's land because they won't exist anymore. A really nice red spell, if you ask me. Fell the Profane, it's strictly better Hagger Mauling. This backside could come in on taps, but Hagger Mauling was a little bit crappy because it only got cost reduction based on non-basics. This doesn't have any of the cost reduction, and I prefer that for having an untapped side of the land. It has give and takes, but I still think this is 
way better. Oh, I thought they were only gonna be printing one in each color that comes in untapped, but it seems like all the MDFC cards that are monocolored will have the option to come in untapped. This one does three damage to a target attacking or blocking creature. It's not bad, but you combine it with the backside of this clause and it makes it super good and worthy of playing. We saw the one that can blow up an artifact or enchantment, and that's why I know that they're gonna be printing multiples in each color. I'm pretty excited. Can't wait to play these in my decks. Triton Wavebreaker, another efficient bestow. Trigger that's significant. Gives plus one plus one in prowess. Prowess is like the step below storm because it triggers whenever you cast a non-creature spell. If you put this on an evasive creature, you could potentially string enough spells to get something big enough and one-shot people. <laughs> Disruptor Flute. And oh boy, does it disrupt people. You choose the card name. Spells of the Chosen in Custody Bar and, and activated abilities of the Chosen in can't be activated if they're mana abilities. It may not be as cost efficient as Pithing Needle, but I like that it has more flex in that you can increase the cost of something. Say the, there's a scary commander that only has an ETB trigger, doesn't have an activated ability. You can delay that person from playing it with the, the middle ability. Most of the time when you play stuff like this in Pithing Needle, you need some knowledge of your opponent's decks to play them. Sink into Stupor, this lets you return a spell or Nalem permanent to its owner's hand and has the land side to come in untapped. Can't ask for anything more. If these are budget friendly, there's no like reason for you not to play these in most of your decks. Even in like the 60 card formats, there's no reason not to play them. <laughs> Just too goddamn easy. <laughs> Where they first introduced these, the only ones that had that untapped clause were the big expensive mythic spells. I rarely played anyways because I don't like expensive things. I like that we are getting more mana efficient sides. The effects might be smaller, but I get a lot more use out of them because I feel like commander games are getting so much faster that most of the time I was ending up playing them on its land side. This actually makes me consider saving the spell. It's kind of like playing the MDFC two-colored lands. Like, you always save playing those for last until you ran out of lands in hand. That way you can make the most informed decision. That kind of effect is now being applied to these efficient spells. That brings us to the end of today's spoiler review. There are no spoilers over the weekend, so you won't see another one of these videos till come Monday, but I looked at the card counts of the set. 201 of the 233 cards are already spoiled, so they'll be stretching out those 30 cards over a period of five days, so I might not even make a video on Monday, because if I'm only going to be talking for a few minutes, it's not really worth the time, and I'd rather just combine like I did today with yesterday. So I hope you all enjoyed. If you stayed this along, subscribe. Like I said, covering the remainder of Modern Horizons 3, and then I do plenty of other stuff on the channel. I do gameplay, and I build budget decks just to show you how powerful that they can be everyone take care now bye